Heroes of Minheim. Tricky sorts. Odd sorts. Folk like that really shouldn't work, really. Some of the stuff they did, coming out of it with barely a scratch. Now, some of that is impressive, don't get me wrong, but, well, some of it seems oddly lucky to me. Being in just the right places at just the right times. Well, seems some of that luck might have run out for one of them. That's the problem, you see, when you start thinking you're invincible, you start making mistakes. Now I, I don't think I'm invincible, no, 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 not by a long shot. If I wasn't so useful to a lot of folk, I'd probably be long dead. Hence, I'm careful, cautious, I don't want to get too big, I don't need to be too big, not like this lot. Looks like Kruger forgot the lessons learned when you start at the bottom. Guess we'll see if he is able to learn a new lesson now. I hope so. This is Red Moon role playing. You're led to a discreet looking door in some tenement building, and this woman knocks on the door, frowns, knocks on the door again, frowns. Uh, hang on. She tries to open the door, and it does, and she sort of steps into a building for a moment. She then steps out. Oh! Well, this is slightly problematic and embarrassing. Uh. <laughs> Just narrowing my eyes at her. What now? Oh, well, have a look for yourselves. She opens the door leading into the building. I will step forward. If it's a trap, it's a trap. Ugh. It's not a trap. But it's not pleasant, Heinrich. Immediately, the smell of charred flesh meets your nostrils. You are in a small room. Maybe once it was someone's home, but now it seems largely just empty other than some tables and chairs. It doesn't lead anywhere. The stairs seem blocked up with garbage and old wooden crates. But there are five or six charred bodies on the floor. In various states of death. There's a lot of blood going to assume that one of those is our man? No. No, they're all ours. Two missing persons, then. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was right here. Swear, this isn't a trick. He had six men on him, uh, and, uh, oh, fuck. He was a weedy little lawyer. How the hell did he do this? Are there any more entrances to this room? There are some windows leading to the back of the building, yes. I'll immediately start just walking around looking for anything that's unlatched or otherwise for seemingly for having been forced. There is an open window. A little bit of blood on the handle. Ah. Uh, here. Would you like to roll a perception check at a minus ten, Gurner? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Oh, that's a pretty poor roll. I'm going to use a fortune to roll again. All right, that is uh, success, plain success. It's awfully hard to strain, Gurner. Even here, Gur is abundant. But you can still focus on other winds if you really try. And around the windowsill, and a little bit of the room itself, although it's starting to fade quite quickly, are traces of dar energy. You can see its black substance just slowly, slowly starting to evaporate into the natural order of the winds, but it's still here. By the door frame, by the window sill, and all over the room. Dar. Ah, oh, why does it always have to be dar? Could have been Akshi, when it's all burnt like this. I mutter something to myself, and I try to look outside to see if... Has this window been broken open from the outside, or does it seem like they just open it from the inside? It looks like from the inside. Well, it don't seem like anyone has been moving in from the outside. Not from this way, anyway. I say to the others. There's a fair chance that he has liberated himself using, well, magic. Looking all the ash around, by liberated himself. Is that a euphemism for disintegrated or... Disintegrating the uh, people around him. Ah, I see. How do you survive something like this, though? If you're at the epicenter of it, is that something 
Uh, I, I do apologize for my ignorance. Is that something wizards are capable of? Um, depending on how the magic is woven, yes, absolutely. And it could be that he himself is not a wizard. It could have been made, because I witnessed this fairly recently, through some sort of charm or item that had this magic stored in it. He could have had it on his person, hidden somewhere, perhaps. Oh, tangent very much to what we're looking into right now, Gurnar, but the... And I look at him. The medicinal, the surgical benefits that magic like this... I don't mean simple cauterization, but preserving some parts, removing others... You and I, I think, are going to have to have a chat when this is all over. I think there's great work, great work that could be done. The woman with the eye patch looks very awkward and sort of just shuffles by the door saying, Uh, well, I mean, well, he can't have got far. No, no, we we really should be moving, shouldn't we? Sorry. Uh, sometimes I get carried away, I see human remains. No, no, that's that's perfectly fine. No, no, I just want to say like this wasn't this wasn't. Arthur's <laughs> this, this going to be really, really angry. Uh, he was here. He was right here. Uh, that's he's fucking killed six of us. Fucking hell. Oh, uh, my my condolences, Heinrich. You're our scout right now in in absence of Kruger, and I look to him a little like uh, and as much as I do think more of Heinrich than this, I look at him a little like well, I look at Erica. Leaning forward slightly, patting my thighs, saying, Come on, then. Where are we going? Well, Heinrich, what do you do? You have a scene with six charred bodies, blood splatter everywhere. The first option that presents itself that seems even remotely reasonable has to be the correct one, because any amount of thinking more is going to make his brain heat up. So, Gurner, you said there was a, a, a trail of magic. Is that the kind of thing that you could you could follow somewhere? Does it Does it work like that, like footsteps? Uh, well, it's rapidly fading, and uh, this um, what trail that we have right here is more the remains of what happened in this room, not necessarily tied to a, a person. Don't chew that, Erica. So sorry. It's Erica, put it down. That's someone's leg. Sorry. Erica wags her tail, but seems a bit disappointed as she puts down the leg. There is, however, some blood here in the window. If Erica is capable of tracing, then uh, sure. Have a look here. Come on, Erica. Let's sniff this out, shall we? And as she does, I will also... Uh, I will move ahead and, and see if... If I need to climb out the window, I'll do so. Just see if there are traces of Dar leading away from the place as well. Well, Erica goes over and begins sniffing at the blood, and she begins barking and quickly exits the building through the window. It looks like she's picked something up. And as she goes outside, as you climb out the window as well, Gurner, it's a very narrow street you find yourself in. Several of the buildings here are completely nondescript. Again, this is a very run-down part of the city. And you think you see one shutter open and close, but you're pretty sure it's just someone giving you the eye and they're not wanting anything to do with you. But there is a slight trace in the air. But as you're looking and finding it quite hard to focus, it does seem Erica on this occasion is having an easier time. And she runs past you, wagging her tail, barking, and goes down the street. If all of you eventually make your way around to follow Erica, you do find she's stopped at a small little building with a symbol of a dove on the front. It looks like a little shrine. This might even be a shrine to Shalia. You'd all be at least vaguely familiar with the religious uh, icons of that religion. And that's where she's barking, at this small little run-down shrine. Very small indeed. It's not unusual that there be a temple of Shalia in a place like this. It is, of course, the religion of compassion and mercy and charity. And there are often small, small chapels. But it is odd that that's where Erica has found herself. Is it an affront to the gods to shoulder your way through a closed door at a shrine? There's no need to wait, and, and Hyrek certainly doesn't is not enough of a theologian to care. Oh, you know me. I think it's all superstition. Yeah. So, I, w what are the options? There are either just some ordinary, good-hearted people in there who'll be surprised, uh, or there's some bad people in there who'll be surprised. The key point is I want either of them to be surprised. So, I, I will uh, a kick or a shove, whatever the appropriate action verb is, just through the door. 
You barge the door, kicking it down. It swings open very easily. And you find yourself in a very small, almost hovel-like shrine. There are some benches. There are lots of candles that flicker dramatically as you enter. There is a small shrine before you of a woman, her hands covering her weeping tears. My classic icon of Shalia, of course. And that shrine has several little offerings of candles and empty bowls. And as this happens and you barge in, a woman from the left enters the room. There is a side door to the left of this small little shrine. She is dressed, as you would expect, an initiate of Shalia. Long robes covering her head, a necklace on her person with a heart with some red, a heart filled with blood. Again, another symbol of Shalia. She seems about maybe middle-aged or so, maybe 30 or 40, you, you can't quite tell. Not too young, but definitely not too old just yet. Long dark hair, grey eyes, and as you barge in, she seems very startled and shocked and simply says, No, please, uh, I, we've already paid. I've already paid for this month. Please, we have anything else. Uh, stay yourself, ma'am. We're not here to harm you. Has anyone else come into this building recently? What? Uh, th th no! Uh, th this is this is a, a place of Shalia. This is a place of shelter and and community and love. I, I, uh, um, no, no, but you uh, you just barged in. Uh, no one else has come here. No. Uh, we're ma'am. We're pursuing someone very very dangerous. And if you have any information, I would love to have it. I, I don't. Um. Uh. She starts stuttering a little. Would you all like to make an intuition roll? Yes, that is 36 under 49. Heinrich, you look over this woman, this initiate. Why is she stuttering? Why is she suddenly so concerned? Why do her eyes suddenly start darting to the left? She is very anxious and worried about something. No, I, I don't know anything. I, I, I swear, I, I, I don't. please, this is pure, merely a, a shrine to Shalia. I'm going to draw my rapier and also dart to the left. You dart to the left, which leads through to a door, and you find yourself in a small... Well, it looks like a, there's a bed here, there's some storage for food, there is a... You can see a hatch in here as well, leading downwards. As you do so, the woman tries to stop you quite weakly. But please, no, I, I don't have anything! Please don't rob me! Seeing as how uh, Heinrich is onto something, I'll just step uh, in her way and let him go about his business. I'm sorry, uh, madam, it's going to be for the better. I... Did, I... Did, um... This is a place of sanctuary. It's, we have to offer sanctuary, you understand? We, we, we offer sanctuary. People have just been murdered by this man. Just think carefully about who... You are saving by letting us get to him. Please, don't, don't hurt him here, please. <laughs> we will not, it is not our intention. We would like to take him away, somewhere where, where he can't hurt anyone, all right? Not in the sanctuary, we'll try and do that. Now, is there anything else with that in mind that you would like us to know, perhaps, regarding this man? Roll a charm check and give yourself a plus ten as you are actually being quite nice to this poor woman. That is uh, two uh, degrees of success. Two levels of success. She looks at you, looking suddenly very lost. She begins to weep. I... these... I don't know what's going on. I just... he's not a... I, I don't think he's a bad man. He helped me. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's often the way. It's often the way. Not everyone is truly evil, but he has to face up to his crimes as well. I will try and respect your words, unless he, of course, attacks us. We will try to take him away peacefully. Did you see if he was armed with anything as he came? No. And do you know where this leads, I say, and I point to the hatch that Heinrich is probably about to try and open? The, 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 the cellar. <laughs> and then she just starts weeping. Heinrich, what do you do? You can hear the conversation. Seller, he's here, not armed. And you can see a hatch right in front of you. 
I look, I mean, I'm not that smart, but I am that smart. <laughs> First thing would have been to check under the bed and make sure no one's going to come at me, but I can put Hatch and he together. Well, as you look under the bed, there is nothing there. Yeah, so then uh, it takes one hand to open the hatch and the other hand to hold the pistol in the face of whatever I find in that hatch. You open the hatch, which leads to some steps. They go down. You're in a storage cellar. There's an awful lot of crates around here. It's rather dark. But, of course, there is light coming from above. It's not too difficult to reach for a torch, if you want, to light the area. Gurna, you see Heinrich heading down a hatch. Siegfrieda, what do you do? You're in this small chapel. There's this weeping woman. Erica is alert and ready. Well, as this woman is weeping, <clears throat> I'm not exactly known for my bedside manner, but we're not all going to be able to fit down this hatch at the same time. I am going to try and see if there's any more information she has. I'm going to put my arm around her. Let's see. There, there. Come, let, let's sit down. Let's sit down while I'm a member of the Physicians Guild. Uh, I, 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 can, yes. I can help you. Uh, and if there are people here who are hurt, I can help them as well. Is there anyone? What what kind of injuries? Did you see the kind of injuries anyone that came this way had? I, I think he was hurt a little. We haven't had time to... I haven't had time to do anything. It just happened so quickly. I, Please, you have to understand, he... He helped me. He is the reason I'm a priest of Shalia. Oh, you, you've, you've known him for quite some time, then. Uh, d yes. Oh, that, that, uh, in that case, your actions here are completely understandable, my lady. Uh, I think what you've done here is, uh, is, the, is emblematic of your charitable spirit. I was, I was trying to rob him. <laughs> I was so young. I just wanted a purse. They caught me, and, and they were going to ship me to the mines. But he, he stopped them. He stopped them. He was a lawyer. He stopped them. He, he, he just allowed just a simple brand on my hand. And, and he sh briefly shows her hand. That is a small mark. You would be familiar with this. It changes depending where you are in the Empire, but it's often a sign of a pickpocket or marked thief. Quite a merciful thing, really, since most thieves just get hung or sent to mines. And, uh, and, and... If and I give her hand a gentle pat before letting her put it away again, because she's clearly a, a little ashamed of the mark. And I, and I, I speak to her. I look her in the eyes and I say, "Do you know? Does he work with? Does he have friends? Is it a group of friends? Do they go by?" Uh, he's a fame. He's a lawyer. He works in the city. I haven't seen him for years, actually. Just, just uh, so yes, we know he probably works with other lawyers, uh, solicitors, magistrates, and so on. Uh, does he have other friends? I don't know. I work here. I am a initiate of Shalia. I, I, I live here. I haven't seen him for so many years. And you suspect that he just ducked in here because it was the closest place he could get to. He was in trouble. He's hurt. I, I. D of course. Well, let. Why don't you lead the way, and then we can maybe resolve all of this peaceably, and I can treat his injuries. I say, looking over at Heinrich. Well, as you see, look over to Heinrich. You see, he has already gone ahead, but this woman does nod, and starts to come with you, Heinrich. You descend into the cellar. Can't see in the dark, so if there is a torch, then I will take it. Torch in one hand, gun in the other. Forward we shall go. Gun in one hand, torch in the other. You pause for a moment and you can hear some conversation from upstairs, but then you are immediately distracted by the conversation directed at you. You can't quite see where they are, but somewhere in the shadow, someone suddenly yells out, No, stay back! Stay back! I'm warning you! I'm warning you! Stay back! I am very, very bold. I am not going to walk face first into a scared wizard. That just does not seem like a good idea. So I will stop. Uh, taking on a bit of the same demeanor that I had with Ulfric. Just, okay, I'm definitely going to remain in a position to to be able to, to act uh, if this guy tries anything. Uh, can I tell, based on the voice, which direction this is coming from? To the left. So, to the left of you, possibly behind some boxes in the corner. You, you don't think this place is actually that big. Maybe it's enough for 
a move action to take you across most of it, you think to yourself. But you do pause, and you do see a bluish glow come from the left, and something begins to crackle as this voice says, I'm warning you, I, I, I don't want to do it, but I will. I will. You don't understand. You can't kill me. You, I, I, you, you don't have to. It's look, You are in a place of sanctuary, and, and Sigmar help me if I spill blood here. Neither one of us are going to do that, right? No, but if you're... Wait, are you not with the Low Kings? If, if, if not, then, then you'd have to take me to, to the Field Marshal, the, the, the Midden Marshal, Midden Marshal, Ulrich Schutzman at once. I have vital information for him. You do, and in point... Yes. Yes, and in point of fact, uh, did, did we get any kind of, like, identification or license or badge or something? You were given a small little symbol, a sort of pendant with a... with the symbol of the city on it. This is the symbol of the watch. So that at least would give you some credence if you wanted to show it. Uh, yes, and that is in, in point of fact exactly who I am. I'm going to reach very slowly down. I'm going to holster this pistol. I'm going to reach into my jerkin. That is where the symbol of the watch is. And you can just see my hand just talking him through this process so he doesn't get any crazy ideas. Uh, and then pull it out. You step forward. You show the symbol. You can now see him in the corner. His hand is glowing ever so slightly with a strange purple energy, but it is stable for now. You recognize him, of course. He looks very different. When you last saw him, he was a fine-looking, slightly nervous, stuffy lawyer in a lovely office with a lovely wig on and some lovely clothing. Now he is covered in grime. He seems to be bleeding a little from the side, and his eyes are wild. At first, he seems to lower his hand, but then he raises it again when he actually looks at you. What? No! You! You! The No! No, please don't kill me! Please don't kill me! I, I, you have to understand! It's not my fault! No, no, no one's going to kill you. I, I have been sent here by the Watch to take you from the Low Kings to the Watch. My associates are upstairs. There are three of us to keep you safe out of this district and exactly where you need to go. No, you don't understand. It's things have changed. Um, you, you okay? You, you you do you actually you do work for for Schutzman, yes? I, yes, he's a nice man and he pays terribly. Good. Yes, yeah, you can. Then no, no. I will tell you what he needs to know, and then you'll get the rest when when you escort me to the gates. I. I have, I have it already. I had it ready. I had it ready. I have a coach ready. I, I'll be leaving. I, I'm leaving the city. I'm never going to come back. No one will ever, ever see me again. I promise. But, 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 I need to get there. But I will give you the initial information, of course, and and the rest, the rest is ready to be sent when, when I am safe. A, a, a wonderful show of good faith. What is it that I need to know? Uh, well, the, um, I know of many things of. of that will help you find the, the, the purple hand. I, I know a lot of where they are, and I can help you find them. But that's not all, of course. But yeah, but do we have a deal? You, you, you're going to hear me out, and, and then you're going to help me. Uh, sir, respectfully, I am hearing you out right now. If I were here to kill you, and I am as dangerous as you think I am, don't you think I would have done that by now? He considers what you're saying and frowns. Purely out of interest, Heinrich, what is going through your mind right now? This man has a spell in his hand. He is a witch. By all legal standards, you should be shooting him right now. And he's asking you to help him get out of the city. Now, of course, you can do whatever you wish, but what is actually going through your mind at this moment? Well, first things first, I, my honest-to-God gut reaction is I'm shitting my pants because I don't actually know if I can draw the gun fast enough to stop whatever he's going to do. I don't, I've never been close to the magic that's happened around us. Everything I know about it is, is built up in this mythology of danger and mystique. And there has not been a fight that we've entered so far where I have not been fully confident in my ability to move first, to be faster, to be stronger. But uh, what is it? Uh, you know, there's plenty of men who can outrun a sword, but I've not met someone who can outrun lightning. Uh, and I am not that man who's going to outrun lightning. So for, for all the, the, the brashness of it, that is actually just reflexive. 
that is you you need to be calm in this situation because if you get emotional it's going to be weird but that has nothing to do with confidence and everything to do with an automatic survival need indeed as you're thinking this Gurna and Siegfrieda do you wish to head into the basement you can hear the conversation it is a very loud conversation yes Yes, I would be uh, happy to. I, uh, well, having then I suppose heard it because of the volume and since it's probably not very far down then, I will step up, but depends a little bit on whether or not I think that Heinrich has got this. And as it sounds currently, it seems to be slightly, slowly disarming. Is that right? Yes, it, it does indeed sound at the moment that Heinrich is trying to negotiate, and it's going okay. No one is shooting anybody yet. Right. Yeah, I feel like involving this uh, priestess or attendant or whatever she is, is almost the nuclear option to either calm things down or raise the stakes. Uh, so I will be standing with her at the top of the stairs, but I don't want to bring her down into view because I don't want him to think we're using her as a hostage, which we might have to do, or um, to use her as a way of persuading him, look, we're not here to hurt you, uh, so I'm quite happy for Gurnar to be there as Heinrich's backup, if, if, uh, if Heinrich needs it. And in that case, Siegfrieda, you move forwards with the initiate, and she does come with you, still weeping quietly, but you stay at the top, Gurner, you just calmly, quietly step down to the side of Heinrich, and now, Gurner, you can see the situation. A man with a spell in his hand, ready to cast it. He's obviously channeled it up. It's cackling with a bluish-purple energy. You don't need to roll second sight here. This is magic, and it is a sickly magic. It is corrupted magic. It is... It's da, but it's worse. There's, there's something else about it. Something bluish. It's very, very erratic. Very powerful, though. And... As he comes down, the man does look a bit more nervous, but he does look to you, Heinrich, the man with the gun. I, so you swear, you, you swear on the gods, you swear on Sigmar, that you are going to help me. You're go I'm going to tell you what you want to know, and you are going to help me. I swear on the gods, on my parents, whatever you need sworn upon, happy to help you. <laughs> Would you roll me a charm check? Give yourself a plus 20. A plus ten, due to the negotiations, and a plus ten, because there is now another man behind you. Gives you some leverage. There's eighteen under what would be sixty-three with the bonuses. He shakes a little. The spell starts to dissipate from his hand. He says, Right, okay, I... So, so, I, so I can give you a, a map of... Uh, I think the last holdout that they'll be probably in is somewhere in the Undercity. Uh, it's somewhere not quite in this district, I don't think. It's on the border. Uh, there'll be... Uh, I think there'll be a lot of them there. But they won't be expecting you. They don't know, I know! So so if you go there with the watch and the cards, uh, then you should be able to get them all. And and I think that will be that will be one of the final places I, you don't know about. Excellent. And I'm guessing this is where I will find my friend as well. Sorry, what? Never mind. He is... Uh, I, whether or not he knows is irrelevant. Uh, at least as far as Heinrich is concerned, and the other two of you, if you're all going to be smarter about it, feel free to jump in. As far as Heinrich is concerned, sewers, cultists, Kruger, it, it all fits together in a way that makes sense to me, so I don't need feel the need to think any harder about it, right? Yeah, I am just looking between the two of you, him and... Uh... Yeah, you. All right. And uh, are we ready to leave then, lawyer? Uh, well, you tell me. I, we need to get out of the district and uh, the south gate. It would work at the south gate. Uh, and then, and then, when I am from the city, I swear you. The the, the, are the others involved because they weren't alert. They had some friends. They had some friends, and you you know they, you want to know about them as well, right? Well, you won't if I don't get the word out. And and. And yes, and uh, that's the short version, of course, uh, unless you had any other questions. Um. um, well, that was what we wanted to find out, right? We wanted to see what he knew. 
Well, Gurner, that is the question, isn't it? He has now told you something that sounds very important. But roll an intuition check. Mm, it's not a great roll, but we're almost at the end of the session, so I feel like uh, it's... Uh, let's, let's use these luck points. No, that's the worst one. It's definitely not a success. Truth, truth be told, Gurner, this is all very confusing. You're not sure what's going on here. I mean, you have someone who's giving you information. Is that what the mission was? Were you supposed to bring him in? You do seem to remember he did say interrogate and bring him in, but now apparently you're going to help him get away. So yes, yeah, so you're not quite sure what to make of the situation. At least he has disarmed, although he didn't need an introduction role for this. That was magic, and he's casted it. You've seen him cast it before. He clearly killed six people. You do have another role to your job. I... S yes, I do. I do. This is a not someone that is immediately within my college's jurisdiction, I don't think. This is not a grey wizard gone bad. This is some wildling. I don't know how. It doesn't seem he's been like he's been trained at all, but there's a lot of power that he's harnessing there. I'm going to very slowly just step to the side I, I of the stairs in the cellar. I just hold my uh, staff at the ready and uh, like make way if he were about to move away from here I happy to escort him in a place where I can keep my eyes on him he starts fidgeting on his person for something taking out a piece of paper and throws it at you Heinrich there you go it's it might not be perfectly accurate but it, that should that should lead you where you are uh, you need to go sir and um and there you go, and that will be big, that will be a big thing. It's a very big thing! It's helping, it's gonna help everyone, and... And you understand, you understand, it didn't... It didn't... It wasn't supposed to... It all... It all, it all went too far. Uh, but but it's over now, because if you've done it, you've, you're getting them, and now you're gonna get them because of me! And there's more information as well. There's more that will come when we... So, how do we get out of the building? Uh, the Low Kings might be looking for me. Oh, that I... We first of all we got the building at least first thing by the stairs in front of you. Come on. And he nervously begins stepping forward and moving past you. What do you do, Heinrich? It, he's right there, stepping in front of you. Now he's he's got his back to you. I know, and I don't want to kill him. I get mechanically. Does this game have a have the uh, the old sap across the back of the head mechanic? It certainly would in this scenario, if you wanted to, for example, butt him on the head with your pistol very hard. We can simply make that a simple roll. Yeah, then let's go that way. Well, in that case, Heinrich, as he moves past you, as you draw your gun and get the grip ready, would you like to make a weapon skill roll? Give yourself a plus 30 as you take him completely by surprise. Ah, uh, that is a 21, which would be under 71, so five degrees of success. How do you clock him and take him out? I think the, depending on where Gurner's eyes are, the defining piece of this moment will be Heinrich rolling his eyes as the wizard begins to climb the ladder. And he lets him get his, his hands on the rungs without getting his feet up and then adjust an eye roll and like not, there's no pleasure in it. It's like, oh, finally. And then just clubs him across the back of the head. Uh, Heinrich will not make much of an effort to catch the body, but just to make sure he doesn't, you know, crack his head on something. Not to keep him safe, but to keep him alive. Of course. And down he goes. You all see this, says Heinrich very quickly, very quietly, actually, just clonks this guy out, knock him out cold. The woman lets out a little wail, but she doesn't try and stop what's happening, Siegfried. She doesn't rally against you. She just weeps a little and just says, oh, please have mercy. Oh, let, let me take you back to your to your chair. It's, it's quite all right. I think he was just getting a little agitated. Sometimes you have to, uh, sometimes you have to do that. I, I walk her away. I, I tell Erica in a low voice, 
stay, just in case he has some contingency spell up his sleeve that will wake him from a state of unconsciousness and therefore needs a dog's jaws wrapped around his throat. You never know. These things happen. Uh, but uh, I can I can look after the woman and ensure she doesn't cause a fuss. Gurner Stark, what about you? It seems suddenly, very quickly, Heinrich has taken this guy out. He's not killed him, of course, but he has knocked him out cold. I send you a quick unreadable glance and then I nod and I say fine right and I uh, I grab one of his arms because I'll have my stuff in the other one just to hold him up uh, I suppose trying to host that around my shoulder so we can start carrying this man out yeah we can muscle him out of the basement but I uh, do as, so as we're, we're going through these motions, I'll say, do, do we need to tie his hands or, or gag him? How do I make him not be able to do what y'all do? Well, if you have something to tie his hands, and why not, yes, gag him at the in the process. That should eliminate any risks. Let me just check that he doesn't have anything on him, and I will go through his pockets just in case there is anything there that could be used as a quick charm or channel yeah, any power stones or whatever. He has absolutely nothing on his person other than a small purse with a few silvers in it and a few more scribbles of paper. No powerful magical artifacts on this one, Gurner. And yes, tying his hands and gagging his mouth is a perfect way to disable him unless he is secretly actually a really powerful wizard, but for some reason you don't think that's the case. No, this seems more like some accidental raw energy that he has come upon to some yeah to learn how to channel very bad and with that that's what we'll do we'll uh, gag him up and uh, tie him with whatever rope or dirty sheets we can find in here or have on our persons then as you tie him up and gag him and successfully capture this individual well do you leave the building to start with no, I think as we're hauling him out, the bit about the Low Kings has not escaped my mind. Not that they aren't trustworthy, but they aren't trustworthy. True, although you would be aware that he obviously didn't know that you just made a deal with the Low Kings to get him. Yeah, that deal was before he lit all their friends on fire, so I don't know. I at least want to uh, consult with Siegfrieda uh, about the best way to get him out because if nothing else uh low kings or not walking an unconscious person through this district might not be the the best way to go about things that's true well in that case do you maybe just bring him upstairs and for the moment put him in the shrine yes we can tuck him in a corner somewhere so he doesn't fall over and choke on his own tongue then that's what happens uh, again she just goes to her chambers and starts to weep she doesn't seem to want to stop you and there you are, Siegfried. You have your target. You have him. He is bound. He is gagged. And something that would occur to both of you, Siegfried and Heinrich, is you now have full control over an individual who gave information and then said there was more information, but you wouldn't get it until so and so and such and such. And well, now you have this man completely at your mercy. There are no guards coming to arrest him and when you look outside Siegfried you see the woman with the eye patch but she just sort of is just watching quite passively you don't see any reinforcements on her end coming you almost feel as if you have all the time in the world well except Kruger's still missing except for that of course I will say to Heinrich you know this is always the this is what they say isn't it uh, in times of war the prisoners are the biggest uh baggage really what do you do with them it's a lot easier when they're dead i'm not not suggesting we kill him that's not the point we need he needs to be interrogated um we can't leave him here do we give him to the low kings and ensure <laughs> get their assurances that they're not going to murder him while we go traipsing off after kruger do we take him halfway across town in this state i don't know you do have symbols of the watch on you. It does occur to you, Heinrich, that you were given full permission, essentially, to arrest this man. So you actually think that once you get out of the district, flash that symbol, you're technically working for the guards, taking a dangerous man in. 
Oh yes, I I don't I don't doubt that we could uh, put him under lock and key. I suppose the the thing that worries me is letting him out of our sight until he gets to his intended destination. And right now, what's going on in my head is essentially let's divide the distance we have to travel with an unconscious body by the amount of time that Kruger has left alive and maybe calculate the square root of how much sewage he can hold his breath in, that sort of thing. I'm weighing up the options, and it's been a very long time since I've had to essentially balance out the right way and the wrong way of doing things. There's always a... There's always something in the right hand and something in the left, and the right way of handling it would be to say, Kruger is our friend, he's been our companion from the start, even at the cost of this one gold crown, this one whole gold crown we're going to get paid for turning him in, we cannot run the risk of Kruger losing his life. But we can't just leave this man here. So... Racking my brain, because on the left hand right now, I would suggest we give him to the Low Kings to look after so we can get straight onto the track of Kruger. But I think there has to be a middle way. And thinking about it, as we have the seals of the guards, all three of us have those, I'm guessing, as, as, as uh, effectively honorary members of the Watch... Is there... Assumedly, assumedly there are several guardhouses. There are essentially outposts in every district. There'll be jails in every part of the city. There'll be a one central one. But are there small ones, essentially for, like, your your town drunks and so on? People who need to dry out overnight? There are certainly a couple of those. Not in this district, but in the more normal districts, there are indeed. How far away are we from those? In... in terms of time rather than distance if you make it out of the district fine probably an hour oh, oof, that's a long time for, for Kruger to be by himself you know how he can't look after himself Heinrich true but as you look over this map that's been drawn it's a big one you think even just going down there right now even if you kind of can work out where this is, because again, Oso is a little bit difficult considering you don't quite know how the sewers work, but even following this map, that could take you two or three hours. So you, you think no matter what happens, you're not going to be saving Kruger any time within the next hour. Let's take him down into the sewers, chain him or tie him to a wall, upside down if we think he's at all threatening because he will feel like the sewer level is going to rise up and drown him, and I lean in on uh, Gernar and say, don't worry, we don't actually involve ourselves with torture, our merry band. Well, uh, actually, that's not true. We have uh, in the past, but uh, we're trying to wean ourselves off of that. But we take him with us, we put him somewhere where he's not going to be able to escape and no one else is going to be able to find him, because who wanders around in the sewers unless they're people like us? And then... We find Kruger, we come back with the whole batch of objectives, all in one hit. What do you think of that? Having stood by the window, looking out, just trying to see if there is anyone coming up the road looking for us or or our mm, elusive prey, I turn to you and I say, well, I must admit it don't feel in my best interest to leave a unlicensed wizard anywhere, considering he could, well, he can't do much with himself right now, but if anyone comes and sets him free and it'll be on my watch, I I don't like it. I understand your friend is, is close to you. I, I could also see how, well, if the two of you wants to set out to look for your friend, and I don't know how I would catch up with you, though, I could start taking this man back. If we could just find a detachment of the watch, just get close and far enough out of the district, we wouldn't need all of us, surely, to to get him back to where he needs to be, in, well, taken care of. How far can your magic transport you and someone else via the shadows? Well, not more than f 30 yards or so. Uh, and I guess this isn't something you can use uh, consistently and rapidly. No, it'll take a bit of channeling up the 
shadows and I'll, I'll go around me first. Yes. Heinrich, as this is all going on and you're looking at that map, something does occur to you. The second part of the plan was to get this man's information and then you were going to really strong arm the low kings of the area to force them to help you with promises of magical gold that may or may not exist and then they were going to help you find where you need to be. Well, you've now got a map that any sewer jack or sewer person could read. What would happen if you just went back to the actual watch? Would they charge you or negotiate with you to save someone and kill cultists or would they just do it because it's their job? No, my, my thinking is is a bit halfway between uh, Siegfrieda and Gurner. The first part being that I, I do understand that time is of the essence, but rather morbidly, uh, I think whoever took Kruger wants to keep him alive. That uh, whatever band of brigands nabbed him, they are not going to just immediately you know dunk him in a in a cistern somewhere and call it a day. There's always a boss who wants to monologue when it comes to cultists. That is very true. In fact, it occurs to you if they wanted to just kill him, like they could have. They could have already. He could already be dead right now. It, but the fact that no one seen him in a sewer or he didn't get killed immediately. What if you're right? What if? What if? You still you have a bit more time than you think. Yeah, he's either already dead, or we have time to make sure that this cultist also doesn't escape. I am not a hundred percent on handing him over to the guard, just because the guard has been in on it before. But that that's a problem for future Heinrich. I think, and I'll explain this out loud. Whatever they're going to do with Kruger. I think it's going to take more than an hour. If they wanted to kill him, they could have done it in the alley. If he wouldn't have found a map, we'd have found a body. They're keeping him for something, and I I don't mean to say that I'm okay with our friend being interrogated or tortured or whatever, but the risk of leaving this one unattended, uh, making a clear point to point at the wild wizard, not the tame wizard, is too great a risk. I think we can drag this one back to the watch. We'll enlist reliable soldiers instead of paying a gold crown per man to get half nose to cooperate. Then we can find him. Then we can find Kruger. As ever, Heinrich, you cut through the stink like a knife. <sighs> then the only other question is how to take an unconscious man through the city without attracting attention, or at least an hour of it. You do, as you say that, find yourself looking outside on the little street. Is that a little hay barrel? It is. How convenient. There's a little barrel of hay just outside this little area. Maybe it's used by the initiate to do her shopping or something like that. It does seem to be attached by a bit of rope to the building. You didn't notice it when you were coming in, but now you do. You could fit a body in there. Oh, that works for me. Uh, far be it for me to steal from a holy woman, however. Uh, I will happily compensate her for her wagon, because I do not expect to be bringing it back. Uh, communicating that plan, that if this sounds like something that we can do, I am more than happy to load a wizard into the wagon. We will take them to the watch, and then God, we'll go be filthy in the sewers. Does that sound reasonable? Does that sound okay? I'm on your team, and you're the commander, Heinrich. I say that with a certain amount of genuine joy, because I enjoy it when Heinrich's decisive. It always ends up with something exciting happening, whether it's something excitingly bad or, or excitingly good, but it is always exciting. I mean, we never want for adventure. Gurner, you're a dispassionate observer. First day on the job. Does this sound reasonable? So we are going to pull a, a cart through the town back to the guards. Is that what you're suggesting then? Oh, we don't have to. I'm happy to do it myself. Ah. We're all going, but if you're, uh, you know, afraid of getting calluses on your wizard hands, that's fine. <laughs> no, uh, you get me wrong. I could... <laughs> I could arrange for a steed for us, but um, it would be 
a strange sight for most people. And they, <laughs> if we don't want to attract attention, if you're worried about that, then your calloused hands might be the option. Yes, Gurner. Unfortunately, you think if you cast that spell and rode said horse through this sort of city, uh, there'll be a mass panic and you'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I giggled to myself, thinking of the prospect. I think uh, we're better off saving. I don't. I don't know how it was like a, like a, a reservoir or a, a juice or something. We should save that for when it's really going to matter. But if we're all agreed, then. Uh, we have a little bit of time, but not a ton. Off we go, then. Then you go. You grab that from outside. Uh, the woman doesn't protest. She's too busy weeping. Well, there is, on, on that note, one thing I'd like to do before we leave. Uh, because I have sullied this woman's temple, and I am about to steal her cart. So uh, I will draw one gold crown uh, from my purse and place it into the, the offering dish or the altar, whatever the proper way to make a donation to this temple would be. Are you doing that within sight of her? As I understood it, she was in her room or or off to the side? Off to the side in her room, but I think she could probably see it if you literally go over the shrine and lay a gold crown down. Yeah, are you... There's one I shouldn't? No, no, well, well, it just means I won't steal it. Ah, well, there you go. Yes, in that case, I will do it in... in we'll, make a, we'll make a moment out of it, where I will make a point of looking at Siegfrieda, looking over to the priest, yes, and then just very ceremoniously place it down in, into the, uh, the tray in front of the altar. Then that all happens. She comes out and bows very low to you. Thank you, but... Please, just, just understand, I... He was a good... Man, I, I I don't know what's happened to him, but he was a good man. I I, I don't understand. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to... It's sanctuary. I... I don't hold you accountable, and the city won't either. You are beholden to your vows, just as the rest of us are. Although, at the very back of your mind, Heinrich, part of you would go, you're pretty sure they don't give sanctuary to servants of the arch enemy. But that's just at the back of your mind. You can't hold people accountable for what they don't know, and I don't want to interrogate that question anymore because I don't want to put two bodies in this cart. i got a lot of walking to do. No, and I don't want to say to her... I do want to say to her, tell it to the magistrate. I will instead... I will smile and say, don't you worry, we will speak in your favour. You did what any charitable person would, and you didn't know the depths of this person's wrongdoings. She nods and just takes the gold crown and... Says it will go to. I will make sure some of the children get some good food. I promise. See to it, and uh, buy yourself a good cart, because this one is not coming back. And so the three of you begin leaving the district, with a cart, with a body nice and discreetly stowed in. Granted, you do pass by the woman with the eye patch. She does just very quickly say, "Is that uh, was that him? All good then? You got him. We've got him." Oh, good. Well, there we go. The deal's a deal. All sorted then. Uh, well, not that I'm the one uh, dealing with you. Um, <clears throat> uh, just, uh, yeah, all good though, right? Yeah, you'll, you'll uphold your end. There won't have to be a, a horrible gang war or anything. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Uh, now that this is all sorted, I, uh, I am um, sorry for the loss uh, in your, uh, well, company, your guild, your organization. I hope you will be able to recuperate what you've lost. Well... Yeah, no, that's not good, uh, but, you know, again, like, he's going to the gallows, so, you know, it's all settled, I don't need to say so. why, why do we need to kill him when the watch can kill him, eh? <laughs> all right, well, then maybe we'll have a run in together and uh, help each other out another time as well, then. <laughs> oh, sure thing, wizard, you're welcome to come down here and deal with us any time you want. Gives you a wink. <laughs> I uh, tip my hat and then I turn away and I kind of grind my teeth because it's leaving a bad taste in my mouth. And so you begin making your way out of the district. Siegfrieda, you are a little concerned, as you said, what happens if this is all some trick and the Low Kings are getting ready to jump you. Erica is still on guard. But you notice that even though you're being watched, no one's stopping you. No one's coming to bar your way. You might be lucky. This deal might actually be going through, at least for now. And you all find yourselves leaving the district. 
completely unharmed. As you begin making your way through the city, yes, you have a suspicious looking hay cart, but no one actually seems that bothered, especially because quite a few people look to Heinrich and seem to recognize him in a waving and saying, Why the heroes of Mindheim? Looking at you as well, Lady Marguerite von Wittgenstein. The question is, do you still want to just go to the, the very nearest guard post you can, or it would occur to you, it only takes another 20 minutes to actually go all the way to the Middenplatz, all the way to the Watch Commander. If you hand this person over personally to the Watch Commander, well, you're pretty sure the Watch Commander is not corrupt at this stage. Or if he is, he's doing a very good job of being corrupt. Equal parts worried about corruption, equal parts worried about competence. Because I don't think they teach proper care and maintenance of wizards in whatever law enforcement academy the Watchmen here have to go to, if any. Yeah, so I suppose the extra 20 minutes, Krug will just have to hold on. Um, and like you said, Heinrich. Well, like you said, Heinrich. If It's likely that whoever has Kruger, if Kruger it has indeed been had... Uh, it, they are probably individuals who want to keep him alive. So, an extra 20 minutes, I'm sure, won't kill him. And if we get to him and they've been slowly cutting off his digits and our delay has resulted in losing a few more than he otherwise would have, I can stitch them back on. Oh, see, there you go. Everything's sorted. There is one last thing. As you then make your way all the way back up to the top of the city, it takes some time, but not too much time. One thing you've noticed, Heinrich and Siegfried, is the traffic in Mindenheim is a lot better these days. The carnival is over. There are no longer thousands of people on the street having a good time. In fact, quite a few streets sometimes are empty, if not for patrols of guards, especially in the current lockdown climate. But as you're about to approach the building, it will occur to you, Heinrich, Twice now you've had these individuals in your clutches. Once they were annoying and uncooperative and you had to hide them upstairs and there was a, the black chamber downstairs. The second time you were on top of a wall and again they were putting you off and throwing things at you and then the guards were coming. Now you have another one but in five or six minutes you're going to hand him over and you're pretty sure that you're not going to be involved in the interrogation. You are after all, all not part of the commission. Does a little part of you wonder what other secrets you finally could have gotten out of this man now you had him fully in your control? That sounds like something a heretic would say. No, secrets do not always need to be known. In fact, secrets of this nature, the fewer people who know them, the better. I have encountered entirely too many people who were eager to find secrets and seen what has happened to them. Look, they, they don't sing the hunter's praises when they go to the shops to buy their meats, but he nevertheless plays a crucial role in the economy of the meat. In this case, I don't have to be there to dispense justice. I don't have to sit on the tribunal. I don't have to cut off his fingers one by one until he tells me all the nature of the arch enemy. I have delivered to justice someone who deserves of it, and then it is justice's job to see the rest through it. I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to play judge, jury, and executioner on my lonesome once my uh, education has been more formal. What about you, Siegfrieda? It occurs to you it was a funny twist of fate that you never spoke to this man. After all, he would have recognized you. He was your lawyer. Temporarily, at least. The last time you saw him was in that office. Here, now, well, you were upstairs, he got knocked out. You wonder what would have happened if he'd even seen you. I mean, that was part of the temptation, while I didn't voice it, for me to remain at a remove. Uh, I don't want him shouting out, you're the person I who, for whom I forged <laughs> legal documents within earshot of an initiate of the temple. Uh, it, it, it's better that our encounter is while he was unconscious, because there are still some people who need to believe I'm Lady von Wittgenstein. That is very true. And so, the three of you march in proudly. People are a little confused at first, but the steward does recognise you, especially you two, Heinrich and Lady Wittgenstein, and it's not long before the Watch Commander himself is down with you and nodding vigorously. Excellent. Well done! Good work! What did you have to give those bastards? Oh, well, there is a, a matter of a warehouse that needs to change hands... And changing hands 
without the watch around. He frowns heavily and shakes his head. I don't want to hear another word. Whatever. Do it. I Not another word. Thank you. <clears> Those <throat> oh, scum. Still, excellent. Men, take this one back. Why is he bound up like that? Is there a problem? He is a magic wizard. He's a wizard. He cannot be trusted to have any mobility with his arms or... Well, he should be fine with words, but keeping under close guard, and if you need to ask him any questions, I might want to be there, just for safety. And then, he needs to be scattered to the wind, in the shape of ashes. Ulrich frowns a little, considering your request. Hmm, I suppose, if you think you need to be there, I haven't met a wizard yet who can cast his spells, though, when he's bound and his... I suppose we can't remove the tongue just yet. But what was the initial... What did you get from him? What did you initially get? What does he even claim to know? I uh, nod towards where you've put away the scrap of paper, Heinrich. So I would have kept it in a pocket. Uh, so I'll pull it out and unfold it. Uh, place it on the table. It's a map. This, pointing dramatically, is the location of the last holdout here in the city. You don't say. You're sure? Really? Where is this? D get someone here immediately. Get the sewer jacks. We need to... Is this, th is this, a, this looks like the Undercity. I'm as sure as it can be trusted coming from his mouth, but with your permission, of course, I would love to be on the, the fore of any mission to investigate and deal with said holdout. He looks a little surprised for a second. Hmm. Well, I can't say that wouldn't be... I can't say that would be a problem, but are you sure? You're not part of the commission, you're not part of the watch. Man doesn't need a badge to know what's good for the city, and to know which people should not be allowed to stay in the city. Hmm. Very well then. Get ready. I'm gonna get... how many men? Forty men? No, fifty. G g g this is important! Get some of the knights! And he starts calling out like... All right, I'm going to start assembling the task force. I'm going to find out where this is. We're going to go in there, and we are going to slaughter every single one of them. You are welcome to get ready. Much obliged. But as for yourself, Lady Wittgenstein, understandably, of course, you probably would not be interested in this sort of endeavour, so thank you for your time. Here's your gold crown, and once again, thank you for your service to the city. I will treasure it. And as for you, Grey Guardian, well, up to you. You are welcome to accompany us on this raid, but you are under no contractual obligation. When are you starting it? If we can get the men ready, I intend to be down there, ready to go, two, three hours tops. Hmm. Right. Well, my mission was to report to you. I uh, would like to relay the news to the Guildmaster, and then I'll be with you. Hmm. Certainly. Just before you go, and again, you can see him giving commands to several watchmen... What do you think, Heinrich? It seems the reaction of this man is to call in a small army, and everyone's getting ready to go in. I'm not going to correct him here now in front of his subordinates, but one will hope that... Uh, I don't expect the, the watch commander is going down into the sewers. There should surely be a more reasonable uh, officer who can be persuaded that maybe making less noise or holding a perimeter while a smaller force goes in is correct, but that is not something that I want to, uh, let's say... It has rarely worked out for Heinrich to question the judgment of senior officials in front of their subordinates. That's true. And you think you're right that a smaller command will be actually heading the force, not due to a lack of bravery, but just because you think it does make sense for the commanders of things not to go first, just in case they get killed. Yeah, lead from the rear. That's how you get these jobs. And what about you, Siegfrieda? It seems a task force is being assembled. No criminal enterprise. This is the full weight of the watch and knights going down into this sewer. Do you wish to accompany them? Or have you maybe done enough? After all, you know one thing. This is not going to be an investigation. It's not going to be a crime scene. It's going to be a slaughter. Well, I think we, I think we have to accompany them to ensure that Kruger does not get caught in their blades. Uh, for all we know, he will be at the front being used as some kind of hostage, and uh, the Watch aren't exactly known for their, well, their subtlety or nuance. 
So uh, I think uh, accompanying them is, is, is necessary, quite frankly, in, just in case he happens to be held captive in their path. Then while, again, this Ulrich will look a little confused and just double check, like, are you sure, my lady? I'm not saying you can't come, it's just, uh, it's going to be very dangerous and very bloody, and you are a, well, I mean, not, I'm not saying we won't need a doctor, but, again, are you sure? There will come a time in Middenheim when you don't just see uh, women and nobles as the weaker part of society, but I appreciate your concern. No, I have already travelled very far in my life, and I have already overcome many dangers. One more sewer full of miscreants is not going to stop me. Well, then I expect you to arm yourself and get ready. We move out soon. Oh, I have my crossbow. Barely had to use it, but it would be nice to give it a, a bit of air. Then forces begin to gather as the watch and several knights get ready to raid this part of the sewers. And it seems all three of you are going to be accompanying them. How are you feeling, Heinrich? You've done this before with no one. Now you're leading, or at least being led, but you think maybe when you're down there you'll be able to do a bit of leading yourself. A full unit of soldiers and watchmen. I don't have any intention of letting them steal the glory. And in days to come, I shall have to lead my own band of little tag-along witch hunters through the forests and villages of this great empire rooting out evil. Might as well start developing those skills now. Indeed. And so, you get armed, and you get ready, as a large amount of men and women begin to get ready for a trip into the Undercity. The way is easy to find with a map and consultation with some sewer jacks, it's just a case of going in there, covering this area from several angles, and, well, finding what you will find. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the legendary campaign The Enemy Within for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, published by Cubicle 7. In this fourth part of the series, we are tackling the Horned Rat. Joining us as players in this series are none other than Aaron Hammonds from Queen's Court Games and our dear friend Matthew Dawkins. The music was made by Flowers for Body Snatchers, Word Clock, Minotron Omega, Agersonus, Apocryphus, Hagrath, and Northumbria, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient for your gaming table. We'd like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoshobear, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Cameron, Anchon, Graham Barry, and Doug Thompson for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that the Skaven are definitely not real, and even if they were, the Emperor has already dealt with that threat. <laughs>